What's up YouTube? This is Victor on the Let Me Explain show and um, if you're watching my videos a lot then you realize that I've been doing uh, videos in the same setting. This is the third one I've done in the same setting and that's because I'm on a roll and just wanted to put these videos out. So right now I'd like to talk about creativity. And this goes out to the visual arts community and those who do performance and writing um, within the art world. That's because I'm part of that community. I, I write. I don't call it poetry because I have a high respect for poets, but I do write. And this writing comes up in my performance work. This video is chiefly aimed at those asking themselves, Am I creative? Am I a visual? Can I be a visual artist? Can I write a poem? Can I write interesting writing? Can I get on stage and perform? Well, my answer is yes. And um, I've got the evidence to back this up. I've taught art for over 15 years. And one of the main um, statements that come up is that I'm not an artist. Or I've been told I'm not an artist and I can't draw. And... The sad truth about that is people believe that statement, people believe that lie, and then that becomes their reality. It shapes their reality. They get into the mode where they cannot draw, either by not trying or, you know, thinking out of, out of the box and giving it a shot, or by simply doing the motion but not being actively engaged in the possibility of something happening there which which leads me to the second part there's something happening there now that um, as a practicing artist i've noticed that i may have an idea for a painting but it's not clear it might not be a clear idea i might have an inkling of an idea and the best way to execute that is to just jump right into it and do it and just start working i've realized that i'm i'm more of um of a tactile person so when i'm using my hands I'm, i become more active mentally but if i just stay in my mind and try to work it out in my mind it usually doesn't happen then doubt creeps in then disbelief creeps in you have to let it all go neo fear doubt and disbelief free your mind and i just end up not creating as effectively as i would if i just go for the moment when when the tide is high i just ride that wave and and just go with it and pay attention to what's coming through uh, by that I mean um, each line that I put down influences the previous line and enhances the previous composition. So creativity then becomes this um, really lively, flowing, immediate experience where I'm paying attention to the details like how the influence is um, shaping and reshaping the image. Why I'm paying attention is because I might want to catch onto an idea, like a line that that pushes um, the painting or drawing in a certain direction. Then I might like to enhance and develop that idea. So, with some ideas, I might not be sure about them, but I like to observe, be the quiet observer as my body's working through this and see where it's going. And that there's always um, an interesting um, f a feedback loop where where I feel content, I feel happy about something, or I feel a bit of um, 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 discomfort, and I realize that this is not the direction I'm happy to push it in. So, so whenever I feel discomfort, then I I just um, re reassess what I'm doing so that I can see if it's the direction I want it to go in. So for me, th those are the, the two navigation posts. It's comfort and discomfort. When I make a line, am I comfortable with it? Am I comfortable with what is done to, to the composition? The composition, by the way, being the, the overall picture. So most people would ask you, how do I know if I'm doing the right thing? Well, you feel it. 
you feel that you're on in the right direction. Now, it's important that that I stress the fact that you feel, all right? This is your composition. Your internal compass knows where it wants to take you, and your job is to follow along its directions. And its directions come in in the the positive feedback or the negative feedback, if you'd like to put it that way, or the feelings of um, comfort, feeling content and happy with it, or feeling discomfort and um, and happy and easy with your composition. So if you want to take it on a religious um, a bent, then that's what you'd call faith. Faith is uh, the belief in things not yet seen. So as a visual artist, you have to, um, much as I said that, you might not have an idea of what you're doing, but your visualizing is being able to see the steps you, you're taking towards it. Or in some cases, if you're lucky, which happens to me sometimes, you have an a, the, the beginning composition. You can kind of see how the idea is shaped out and your idea is then to fill in the gaps. So this also takes me to another part which is theater of the mind now this is where sketching may come may be important carrying a sketchbook may be very valuable because um you might be traveling somewhere and then you have this idea to create a composition with a tree and um um the horizon is three, uh, three quarters up from the tree and you have an idea of a landscape and it has a certain feel to it. So the idea of a sketchbook would be to capture that feeling, just a rough sketch of the tree, rough sketch of the landscape. And you've locked in that feeling that you had when you had the thought. So when you go back to your sketch, it's not just the lines that you see. It's also the feeling that you recall from it. And it's that feeling that drives the painting, the drawing, or whatever creative aspect you might be engaged in. So it's very important to trust that feeling and to latch onto it when you, when you, when you see it coming, um, because this is the fuel that will drive you ultimately when you're doing the actual painting. You want to enhance that feeling. You you want to, to magnify it to make it come stronger. One way up, one way up. When you're down, there's only one way up. When you're down, there's only one way up. When you're down, there's only one way up. To enhance that feeling, you you want to to magnify it to make it come stronger. So, in conclusion, I'd say that everybody can draw, everybody can write a poem because everybody has lived a different life. And when you express your point of view um, as clearly and confidently as you see it then obviously that becomes very creative creativity is being able to see things differently and to execute differently so when you express differently naturally that's creative so i hold a creativity workshop and i just try to tap into what people already have and by that i mean we all have a very different way of drawing lines and lines are loaded with information they just these power boxes of information when i look at somebody's drawing i can tell a lot about themselves and their character through through the lines they make so as i teach um, um, aspects of creativity i like to explain to a person what i see and once they begin to see what i see they begin to understand how their language of line is working and therefore begin to tap into their own creativity. Also look at it this way. Nobody dresses exactly the same. Well, these days, most people do because of advertising. We're forced to look through the same lens. But people have their own creative twists to how they want to appear in public. And that's creativity right there for you, you know. The way you prepare your food, that's creativity. The way you... um lay on your bed in what position d depending on what your body needs that's creativity in a sense so creativity comes in all forms and shapes and sizes and the the job of the artist is to pay attention to those details and see where that energetic spark is and we all know it you know when you look at something and it catches your attention and you're drawn to it you know that's the that's the energetic spark i'm talking about 
And why are we drawn to some things and not to others? Why are we um, more prone to say thing, uh, uh, things in a certain way and not others, you know? Why do we have our own language signature? Like everybody speaks in a different way. Why is that? You know, that's because we've got our own creative spin, our own creative signature that, that underlies that. And therefore, nobody draws exactly the same. Nobody walks exactly the same, dresses exactly the same. And at the end of the day, the whole aspect of my creative workshops or my approach to creativity is to emphasize those differences and then add on top of that the technical aspects that make, make an artwork um, uh, come to life, uh, come alive. For example, um, color theory, um, uh, line theory, you know, the dynamics of line, um, um, spatial um, recognition, application of um, a space within a painting, and so on and so on. So I personally believe everybody can draw. I personally believe everybody can paint. And um, as an art teacher and, and a practicing artist, I've seen this develop over time with my students and some of them, um, most of them are shocked at their ability to create. So thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a blessed day. Stay creative.